I'm gonna show you what love is. Yeah, I was just too hot for SmackDown. Me and legit had a real life feud. We're not Charlie's angels, we're Vince's devils. Oh. I specifically would never do that again in my life. I discovered this is my new gear and I'm not even wrestling, it's my gear. I'm just saying, I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome everyone to Ring the Bell, this is DS, and today, I'm here to learn what love is. I'm here to learn how to move my body. I'm here with Candace Michelle. Yay! And I'm gonna show you what love is and teach you how to move your body. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so excited to have you. We've Thank been waiting you. for this moment for a very long time. He really has. He's been to a few shows, very patient. I'm so grateful. So I'm excited it's finally happening. For the champ, we got more than hundreds of fans, okay. women wrestling fans, submit their favorite moment okay. of their career. Awesome. So we're gonna do a countdown. I'm of nervous the top and five excited. Moments. Okay. It's gonna be amazing. Okay. Okay, awesome. First moment is... You're facing... Her! More experience! A winner! A oh. winner's peak! A oh. winner's peak! The formation of Vince's Devils! Yes! Victoria Wilson and Victoria. Well, how about this entrance, first of all? We have to come up with the entrance. And back then, it was one of those things for us women that was really important. Mm -hmm. And so to come up with this entrance was really cool. But we were all hanging out. We drove on the road together, the mm -hmm. three of us. And one day, we are all together. And somehow, there was a poster of Charlie's Angels. And I was like, we're not Charlie's Angels. We're Vince's Devils. Oh. And then all of a sudden, it just totally stuck. And that became our little, our little tag name. I heard they told you not to use that name. Yeah, at first they did. They're like, no, I can't use that. But then I think Vince liked it. He, I mean, he was kind of like, okay, and we used it. Yeah, so it was good. Yeah. Are you almost done, Candace? God. I mean, before you were a makeup artist, mm -hmm. makeup artist gimmick. Yeah. But this is a time when you actually started really wrestling. Yeah. Right, with Trish, Mickey, Ashley. So how was that training process like here? Well, for me, it was different from most wrestlers. Most wrestlers will go to, you know, OVW and now down south and all these wrestling schools. I had never heard of a wrestling school. Even though I grew up on wrestling, I never knew people went to wrestling school. But I was in Hollywood, I got hired, so now I'm on TV. So in my eyes, I was going to train to be the champion. They didn't hire me for that. They hired me for eye candy and pretty up the business. And so I would go to the shows two hours early. So when the refs were setting up, I'd get in there and the refs really started training me and teaching me all the moves. I rented a ring in California, it cost me $2 a day. So you can imagine what this ring looked like. The guy said, don't bump over here. It's, the, the ring is broken, you'll fall through. There's like chicken coops over here. You know, I was like, okay, I got this, you know? And uh, yeah, I just did what I had to do to, wow. to figure it out. Is there any like women backstage that really helped you grow as a wrestler? Yeah, absolutely, Victoria. I mean, from the day you walk in, she is, I know she plays um, a heel on TV mostly, but she's the kindest soul. She is the most underrated wrestler, in my opinion. She has helped so many of us, especially the girls from the Diva Search that didn't come from wrestling, really learning and just taking care of us out in the ring. She's incredible. I love that. I have a campaign going on. Hashtag okay. Victoria. Or Hall of Fame. Yes, yes, I agree 100%. She deserves that. I, and she's just been underrated. But you know what? Her time's going to come. Yep. And I can't wait to celebrate her when it does. Let's move to a second moment. Okay. It is. Then what's inside? The cover comes to life. Like the biggest bitch that's ever been in play. Oh, man. Oh, this great face. Oh, so fun. What a great segment. And the way you enter. You just know how to enter. <laughs> well, one of the best things about wrestling is making an entrance, mm -hmm. right? And I even teach this in life when I do my coaching. It's you got to know how to make an entrance in your life. Mm -hmm. Who do you want to be? Who do you want to show up as? What are your values, your standards, your rituals? You got to know who you are. And um, it's one of those things that I subconsciously learned through wrestling. I mean, you're just queen of theatrics. This entrance and then this, of course, before WrestleMania. Mania on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> It was so amazing. Who came up with all these theatrical ideas? You know what? Sex sells, guys. I mean, still to this day, people want to dispute it. Women want to deny it. Listen, I'm a woman. It's just the truth. But you know what? When you do it in a classy way or your way or way that you're comfortable with, it's okay. And for me, I always talk about Playboy. You know, I have three girls now. And they're like, are you going to tell them? I mean, first of all, they know. They see it up in the house, right? It's framed, the original, the outfit. But I said, Playboy for me was a dream. 
So what I teach my kids is when you have a dream, you make that dream come true. Mm -hmm. Now there's only 12 people in the entire world that could be in the cover of Playboy, mm -hmm. and only 12 celebrities that can grace the cover. And I said, that's a dream come true. Mm -hmm. So when I teach them that, it's a different level. It's not about what people do when they buy it or look at it. That's not my journey. That's somebody else's journey. But to me, it was a beautiful thing, and to display it like this, that's pretty hot. Uh, <laughs> you know what we have to talk about? You're all eyes on up. Uh, 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 how about this robe? Can we give it up? Come on. Way to make a woman feel good about her gimmick. He brought all this stuff. He's incredible. I, I adore it. At that time, I was really into like more house music. So they, they gave me this song, All Eyes On Me. And I was like... This just isn't me. And, and Vince really wanted me to come out with this smiley, bubbly personality, kind of like Christy Hemi. With that music? Yeah, and I was like, this doesn't work. Like, it doesn't fit. And I, I'd come out and I'd be like, she, uh, no, I'm sexy. I'm not I'm not smiley and bubbly like her. Like, that's her how she is. I'm not like that. And so I was like, when I started to get a little push, I had a little bit more say in what I could do. So okay. I, I knew these DJs, Scooter and Lavelle, house DJs. And I was like, can I just take it to them and get it remixed? I'll bring it back. So they remix it to the house song. And then it just fit, you know, it was like, uh, 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 and you know, popping it open. And so. We gotta talk about the magic wand. Yes, this is a good story. So I was traveling with Victoria mm -hmm. and Tori. We always traveled together. And back then, we didn't have the luxury of having these magical seamstresses backstage making uniforms mm -hmm. for us. So whenever we were traveling, usually it was a stripper store uh, or a swimsuit store or some kind of sexy lingerie store where we had to find some kind of outfits. We go into the store, it's Halloween time, mm -hmm. and I see this wand, and I don't know, just in my head I was like, I'm gonna use this wand. So I buy it, mm -hmm. and I get to TV, and it's going to be a tag team match. And I go down there, Fit Finley is going to be the one organizing our match. I come down with this flimsy stripper wand, you know, shaking it with all these big wrestlers and superstars. And I said, Fit, I wanna use this wand the way Triple H uses his sledgehammer and I'm gonna defeat people with it. Everybody was just silent. <laughs> they were just like, this girl has lost her damn mind. Like, how can she say such a thing? Like, she's comparing herself to Hunter right now? And I was so serious. I was just, I believed in it. And so we started to use it. And then the, the wand was kind of like this. It was a very, you know, simple, really cute thing. Then backstage, they created into a steel wand and they added the lights to it and really made it like a weapon. And my favorite part of this story is I came back to a hall of fame and Fit Finley catches me in the hallway and he says, so you know those wands you used to have? And I was like, of course I know. I remember he probably totally made fun of me, you know, the entire year for that wand. And he said, well, my daughter's been wanting one ever since. Aww. And I was like, I got you fit. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but it was really a cool moment for me too, because it, you know, when you come up with a gimmick and you have to believe in it so wholeheartedly because so many people want to shut you down, same way in life, right? Whatever your gimmick for who you are, people want to shut it down, they want to talk crap. And I was like, you know what? When this little girl, all she did was believe. To give that to one little girl is the most beautiful thing ever. It was also featured on SmackDown vs. Raw Game. Oh. Do a bikini contest. Remember this? I don't. I never saw that. Whoa! I'm Wait. putting a spell on everybody. <laughs> I did not know about this. <laughs> you turned Shawn Michaels into a woman and I had did? a match with him. <laughs> Oh my gosh, see, it's brilliant. Legendary, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> All right, let's move to the third moment. Okay. When you oh, won yes. the women's championship this from Melina. Good. Yes. So me and Melina legit had a real life feud. Um, she really didn't like us girls that came from Hollywood because she came up in the wrestling circuit, really learning like the legit way, going to wrestling school, putting all in all that time and energy. And she thought we just kind of walked in. And this day, they told me I was I was going to win the championship. She was super angry and not happy about this. 
And uh, matter of fact, many times we'd go into the ring, she didn't want to work with me very much. And, and I just, I didn't know if we we're going to have a shoot match, like a real fight or actually, you know, a WWE match. Yeah. Uh, but I was like, we're going out there one way or another and we're going to figure it out. And um, winning this, all I told myself is to just remember that moment because these moments literally last a moment. Because the second later, now we have an entire locker room fighting for that, right? Yeah. Like the, the dynamics change, the dimension of friendships change. And so like this was really, uh, it showed me like, hey, those extra hours when you go in early, I always say I might not be the best talent, mm -hmm. but I'll outwork everybody. Mm -hmm. I'll show up before everybody, I'll leave after everybody. You were improving so immensely. Do you think you ever got the respect from Melina? I did actually, and, and we got it afterwards, but I also learned to respect her because the feud we had, it pushed me to another level. So I remember us meeting up afterwards at an independent show and I, and I told her, I said, I wanna cut a promo for you because without you challenging me so hard, I don't know that this day would have came. When you have haters and people that disrespect you, instead of being recluse about it, you gotta step up to that play and say, no, I deserve this. And she was the one that helped me step up. You know, that kind of backstage real life heat was pretty public. It was on like WWE blog and everything. Yeah. What was WWE's thought on it? Oh, I mean, they love it because it's real life, right? Like, you don't have to act it out because, like, it's the truth. Mm -hmm. So when you go out there, it's easy to really, like, play into those characters. So they, they're they brilliant with that. When they see stuff happen in real life, whether it's between two women or a male and a female or relationships, they put that out right into the ring. You know, in this feud, a lot of people remember your pudding match. Oh, my gosh, yes. And you also had a lot of stipulation matches that's memorable, like Wet n Wild. Yeah, Paddle on a Pole. Paddle in the pole, evening gown match. Yes. I heard you weren't the biggest fan of it. Uh, the pudding match was my least favorite match ever. I specifically would never do that again in my life. Being in pudding is pretty disgusting, like up to your like thighs. And we so desperately wanted to be wrestlers. So trying to suplex Melina, I can't even get her out of the pudding. Like it's like worse than muck, you know? And we came out, it was in our ears and it was just caked everywhere. Like we were in showers for like 20 minutes. But it's one of those things, back then it was just what it was. It was that time, I, I didn't hate the other stuff, but we always wanted to prove how we could wrestle and so for the girls that ever say we didn't pave the way we paved the way because if you ain't gonna put your foot in pudding you know why because I did it for you <laughs> and I heard you stopped eating pudding since then no no pudding no I, no pudding for this girl <laughs> so the next moment is Thank you. That was awesome. Actually, that was actually my first gear that was officially made from the seamstresses oh. backstage. I made it to that level. That okay. was the first one. I mean, this gives me chills because you really rose to the top as one of the credible wrestlers. Thank you. Working with Beth is incredible. And on top of that, our dynamic was incredible. We were so different. You know, here I was this sex kitten and here she was this strong woman. And so I was such an underdog to her. What I love about wrestling is it reminds people to dream. Because if I could beat her, you think I could beat this cancer, I can beat this disease, I can beat this bully, I can beat this uh, trouble in my life. And that's why people love wrestling. They don't know it right away, but that's why we cheer so hard. Because we're like, ah, oh, I can do this in my life. And that's what that match always showed bet between the two of us is you know what you can do this when, when something in your life is so beyond your control so a lot of people mentioned your two out of three falls count mm -hmm. match it was amazing match by the way yeah thank uh, you actually it's my favorite match I ironically and it's because the crowd was so behind us what was supposed to happen is I was supposed to my legs are supposed to hit that top rope and I was supposed to flip in right. but we had just come off a two-week tour mm -hmm. we wrestled every single day right. and we flew almost every single day yeah. and then we flew to Nebraska where that match was and we're just spent and but you know you're just in that go 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 mode right. 
and my legs when they hit i just kind of buckled and my boot got caught yeah. on that rope yeah. and i didn't make the full turn so it wasn't beth's fault it was right, right. it was more so my fault the rumor was that you're supposed to win the title you know i was not winning that okay. night actually but um being knocked out was not the plan either <laughs> i mean you also talk about that match in a TED Talk, which is mm, a very inspiring mm -hmm. TED Talk. Thank you. There's a clip from that TED Talk that fans love talking about. Okay. It, which is a very passionate part. Clothesline! Spinning clothesline! Drop kick! Spinning heel kick! I climbed up to that second rope. Bam! And you went up the chair. Did you plan this? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, um, what is so incredible about this talk that people don't see is, is they see this 10 minute talk. Yeah. I prepared this for one year where I rewrote it, rewrote it, put it together. I practiced it. I rehearsed it. Mm -hmm. So this is a really a, a year performance that you're seeing in 10 minutes. Wow. And and it just reminds me for anything. When anybody's going for a dream, we think, oh, you can just prepare in a day or a week. Right. But we know if you want to be the best at anything, it takes time to train and practice and learn. And when it looks effortless, it usually is because a lot of work went into it behind the scenes. Bam! Yeah. It was amazing. It, thank you so much because this is who I am now, really. And so it was my moment of saying, hey, I'm this wrestler, but I've retired from that field. And here I am. I'm coaching people who are in crisis and help, helping people out of that. And so it was a cool transition for me. Let's move to the last moment. Okay, great. Whoa! Candice has worked so hard to get back to the oh, oh, and there's the power of the behind Candice yeah. with a spinning heel kick to the Gino pleading with them. Oh, top kick to the You versus Beth Phoenix, No Mercy 2008. No Mercy, yeah, okay. So this was the second return from the injury. Uh -huh. We all know now that the first return didn't go as planned. Yes. So what was different this time for you? Whenever we're injured as wrestlers, it's really hard because... I worked so hard to get to this level, to a level not just for myself, but a level to my employees and Vince of seeing me as a wrestler and not just eye candy, and most importantly to the fans, right. so that they could see that I really loved this sport and I wanted to get good. And what happens with injury is it's all taken away from you in a second. It's like a car crash, right? Like you're healthy and you hit by a car and you're not healthy. And when you're sidelined like that, all we do is anything possible as fast as we can to get back. And what I learned from that now, I didn't know then, is recovery, rest and recovery. We don't believe in that as wrestlers. You go, 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 52 <laughs> weeks out of the year, you know, unless you're injured. And even when you're injured, all you're doing is thinking about how can I get uninjured really quick, you know? Yeah. And a valuable lesson I've learned, which I teach my kids now who are in a lot of athletics, um, is recovery is just as important as the training. So this time you felt more recovered. Um, I did, you know, but not. it's not what I would have done not with what I know now. After this one here, I, I believe I had is when I shattered my collarbone. This was the second time around. So I broke my collarbone mm -hmm. on that match that you showed when I was knocked out. And then I came back and my collarbone was still broken. Yeah. I told the doctors, I'm fine. Right. Look, I can raise my hand, I'm right. fine. And it still showed a little crack in there. Okay. And so I came back and um, actually, you know what this is here? I, I actually broke my nose with Victoria on a oh. match. And I came back and um, me and Beth were training before this show. I think it's this show. Okay. I might be wrong. She came up and headbutted me on a freshly done nose. Like I just got it fixed. It was my first time ever getting my nose fixed. It's the first time broken, right? And so it mangled my nose, but I was like, uh, uh I'm wrestling, I'm wrestling. And Vince like, you can't wrestle. It was swollen, you know, my eyes are watering. So I went into the locker room and I put on this makeup and I contoured my nose and I made my lips big and pushed up my boobs. Uh. And I was like, Vince, I'm fine. And he's like, all right, girl, you're fine. <laughs> I got to go wrestle. We fans did not yes. know how much you're fighting backstage. Yeah, wow, I got always, chills. Yeah, always wow. fighting back there, yeah. The other thing, <laughs> Absolutely coming from there. But you also cut your iconic hair too. Yeah, really, I, we were putting extensions in our hair and they were just getting ripped out. I mean, there's some matches. It's like, it is my hair and fake hair because it was, back then they were just glued to your hair. And so like my hair, I was just like, it needed a break. And so I took those out, we cut it short. It was fun and you know, a little change up, you know, really just trying to grow my hair back. <laughs> in this feud, there were a lot of moments that fans like to talk about. Okay. 
right? This one, when you're entering, Beth just started to follow you. <laughs> you know this? And you seem really surprised. I don't even think I really realized she was like mean mugging me the whole time. Until here, until this moment, I was like, wait, what are you doing? You know, I didn't realize she was that close to me in that. Actually, that's the truth. But you knew she was following you. I knew she was coming out with me, but I didn't realize she was so close to me. So I was doing my thing. Clearly, she's like, girl, what are you doing? Who do you think you are? <laughs> and this other moment is when Beth slam slammed, we see a face of you looking so worried. Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, what a lot of people don't realize is even though there's some planning that goes on with wrestling, like that stuff hurts. I mean, you're up in the air, your arms are behind your back, so you gotta make sure your face isn't smashed into the ground. And of course that was my friend up there, you know, getting face planted. Um, and so just really realizing that and knowing, and also just knowing I'm not in that ring at that moment. You know, it's like taking that step back to like go two steps forward and you're like, Damn, I gotta get back there, you know? So after this, you were drafted to SmackDown and you were in intro graphics, everything. Fans were so excited. But then you were never were able to be on SmackDown. Yeah, I was just too hot for SmackDown. And that's the truth that came out because for TV. SmackDown was rated a little bit more PG at the time. Oh, really? Yeah, and Raw was rated R. And I went there for like, I feel like it was like a week or a couple weeks. And then uh, they switched me back. And then, so there was a whole tagline back then, too hot for wow, first, TV. first TV. No, right before you got released, though, you were yeah. drafted to SmackDown. Oh, was I? Yeah. You know, this is like 15 years ago, so I don't remember as much as you guys. I remember just healing from my injuries. I came back, and then um, I tore, because I was working out double now. So I went to Krav Maga, and I landed on the punching bag with my ankle, and I to tore two ligaments. So I went back on injury. So this, if I just got there the second time, um, I was home healing. But it wasn't on wrestling, so they don't tell you about it. And that's when they called me on, my, on that injury and they let me go. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah. No idea. But we all got to see you Yay! winning the 24-7 championship and it's Melina who helped you win totally. the title. Totally. <laughs> I mean, it's so funny how things come full circle in life, right? But I actually love this championship. It was um, something really dear to my heart because behind the scenes here, what people don't see is that I'm coaching people on how to be their own champion. Right. And when you do the work behind the scenes, God just puts these things to show you in the limelight. And I was like, that's so strange. I preach about your values and your concepts and your standards and your rituals all the time. And I get people out of crisis, but nobody sees that. You know, you don't see it on the TV in front of 100,000 people. And here it's like God saw it. And so when I came in this day, I thought I'd just be in a little pre-tape, like, you know, how they bring people in, no big deal. I, I was excited to see my friends and be back for a moment. And to get this was just like that moment. I was like, okay, the big man sees what I'm doing. Now everyone's thinking, when are we seeing Candice Michelle at Royal Rumble? No, I get this question all the time. Do you know this? I'm so down for it. <laughs> yes. Even one year, uh, they promoted that I was going to be there. Yeah. And people were like, why didn't you show up? And I was like, the truth is, they just never called me. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they have a yeah. certain amount of people they got to have and a certain, you know, look and group and all that stuff. And I just haven't made the list yet. So I'm hoping this year it's in Texas. I live in Texas. Oh. Like, it's a good year to go back. I'm just saying, I'm ready. Yes. I hope it happens, but we'll see what they do. I'm so excited for yes. it. You know, you've been a queen of bodysuits lately. Yes. Will you be wearing bodysuits for Royal Rumble? Yes. Okay. So I don't know. I discovered this as my new gear, and I'm yeah. not even wrestling. It's my gear. I just love it. It's just totally who I am. It's my alter ego when I'm not at home with my kids. It's glam. It's sparkle. It fits good. It feels good. It's just It just expresses who I really am. And so this is me. If you see her in Rumble, it'll be a full body, full on, full on yes. dazzle, dazzle, dazzle bodysuit. Yes, yes. Thank you so Thank much you. for counting down top five moments with me. What do you want to tell your fans who are so inspired by you, like me? You know, I just want to say, you know, it's been almost like 15 years since I've wrestled. And I'm here at this incredible event. Um, I'm traveling the world still. And I never thought doing what I love would still be so rewarding this this long later right and it's only because of all of you guys that that appreciate that that supported me that still support me without you guys i wouldn't be here and it's one of those things that i tell people when you go after your dreams it allows other people to achieve theirs 
and, and it just has this trickle effect. And so when you do what you need to do for you, it makes other people inspired. And so please live your dreams and thank you for letting me live mine. I love you, honey. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Mwah.